Okay, so we've mostly focused on video files and image files, color correction and things like that for the majority of the tutorials so far. Now we're gonna move over uh, uh, just quickly to the audio side of things. So you can add filters and corrections to your image. You can also do that to audio files, whether that's a microphone, whether that's uh, your desktop audio or external audio in the form of a MP3 file or a song or something like that. So for today, or for this tutorial, I've set up a audio file. I've gone plus, I've gone VLC video source, which also works with MP3 files and audio files, by the way. And I've set up an audio file on my stream. And I'm gonna click on that audio file and I'm going to click stop and I'm going to click play. Where is play? There we go. So you should now be able to hear that audio file in the background. It's going to be a little bit quiet. Um, but what we're going to do, we're going to look at how we can add some filters and effects to that file. By the way, copyright free sounds, very important to use copyright free music on all of your streaming creations. Uh, let's do this. So first thing I want to show you is the advanced audios properties menu and that is accessible by going to your audio mixer at the bottom here clicking on the cog and then going to advanced audio properties it will open up this menu here i'm just going to pause the music for a second and in this menu we can do a few things with the sound without having to add a filter so i'm going to play again and we can increase or decrease the entire volume of the Music, can you hear that? It got a little bit quieter. If I put this on zero, it's super loud. But if I put it on 20, or minus 20, sorry, it goes back to normal. I can set it to a mono channel so there's no stereo sound between my ears. Or conversely, I can put all of the sound in your left ear. Congratulations, headphone users. You're getting a great experience right now. Or I can put all of the sound in your right ear. Pretty useful that if you have two different sound sources and you want to change up where your audience is hearing them. Let's put the volume down just a little bit more. I'm gonna put it down to 25, minus 25. And another great option in this menu is the sync offset. This is a setting that will help you to get your audio happening at the same time as a video source. So if you have a video source and some audio where they are uh, they are off sync. You see somebody speaking in the video, but the sound doesn't come till two seconds later. This is where you will offset your audio or video to bring them together, to make them match. So I can increase the audio time by 100 milliseconds. I can reduce it by 100 milliseconds or whatever you need to make sure that your video and audio all match up. That can be really helpful when you have a webcam and you also have a microphone that are not synced up together and you want to make sure that what's coming out of your mouth actually comes out of your mouth the same time as the video shows it is and then one more uh, option on this menu i really want to talk about is audio monitoring now when i added this file originally this was set to monitor off and you hear nothing but i want to be able to hear that file whilst i'm streaming so i'm going to set that to monitor only and that means only you can hear it. Only you as the streamer can hear that audio. But if you set this to monitor and output, you're monitoring it to yourself and you're sending it to your viewers. Pretty, pretty cool option right there. Now, audio filters. There's a few um, and we're going to take a look at how to add them. Right, right click on your audio source here click filters now we've got uh, two different sections for filters here obviously we want to add an audio filter so we're going to go to audio video filters and press plus and in here audio move is a plugin we'll come to that a little bit later we've got compressor expander game limiter noise suppression noise gate and those are the ones we're going to talk about right now so let's start with compressor compression basically if i turn it off it's the effect that you add to audio to make it sound like you're speaking through a radio station to make yourself sound really professional it's going to limit the width of the audio to make sure that it all comes in and sounds as one to the viewer so if i add the compressor on now can you hear it's a little bit more bassy and a little bit less directly in your eardrums and this is great for microphones not so great for music because you don't really want to change the compression of pre-composed music um but look if i reduce the ratio 
it becomes, or the threshold even, it becomes even more and more buffed. But if I increase it, it returns back to its normal state. So you can play around with this with your microphone and get some great sounding audio from very average microphones. Attack is the amount of time it takes for the compressor to kick in. Release is the amount of time it takes for the compressor to leave again once it's not hearing any more signal. Output gain is basically just normal gain, changing the volume up and down. Side ducking, side chain ducking will come to a later date. So that's compressor. You, oh, whoops, I'm pressing the wrong minus there. Uh, you also have a expander. This is the opposite of compressor. So if you have audio that sounds very um, bassy, uh, very shallow, and you want to widen out the sound, you would add an expander gain. Gain, this is something you'll probably play with now and then. Very simply, it's a volume slider. However, it does not limit the amount of volume that your audio can go to. So if you increase it too much, it's going to start chopping and you're gonna start getting, uh, yeah, bitty audio and it's not gonna be great. If you reduce it, obviously, you can completely silence out your music. So play with the gain, but also, you know, the slider here on your audio mixer is a gain slider anyway. So maybe play with it from in here and not from inside your filters. I'm gonna remove the gain now. And we're going to take a look at the limiter. Now the limiter is a great, great filter. If you are a streamer who tends to scream down their microphone, what we don't want to do is break the eardrums of your viewers. So what the limiter does is once your audio gets to a certain volume, that's as high as it can go. It adds a ceiling to the volume of your audio. So if I put this down to minus 38 or minus 40, my music can now only get to minus 40 decibels. But if I increase that, to minus 33, it can now get to minus 33. If I increase it to minus 24, it gets to minus 24, and so on and so forth. So it's great at making sure that none of your sound actually, you know, destroys the headphones of your viewers. Let's get rid of the limiter. And we're going to take a look at noise suppression now. Noise suppression. So you probably heard of noise suppression. It is used to remove that crackling, that background noise in, if, if you do have it, coming from your microphone. If you have like a fan in the background or something like that, you're going to need noise suppression. And I'm going to wait for this song to restart because at the start of the song, there is some crackling that I want to remove. So if you have a listen, you hear that crackling in the background? I'm, I'm going to turn it up. Hold on. You hear that crackling? So I want to remove that crackling. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on speaks. I'm going to put it on minus 30. Maybe a little bit higher. Minus 23. And suddenly you can't hear that crackling. But I can hear the music. Let's put it back to the start. Here it is with noise suppression. Here it is without noise suppression. So what this method, what this filter is trying to do is remove all of that crazy fuzzy background noise and just make sure that it's your voice and the main audio source that can be heard. So it's a really, really useful filter. Uh, we've also got noise gate and noise gate is the final filter on this list that we're gonna go through right now. Noise gate makes sure that noise under a certain level and over a certain level cannot be heard. So if I have my close threshold at minus 50, anything under minus 50, you're not going to hear. If I have it at minus 10 decibels, anything over minus 10 decibels, you're not going to hear. So anything within that threshold, you will hear. Great. Again, if you have background noise that you don't want anybody to hear, or you have random moments of screaming and shouting that you want to protect your viewers from. The best way to get to grips with these audio filters is uh, one, to join us in the advanced section of our program where I'll go through each and every one in more detail, but two, to have a play around. You're not going to destroy your audio sources by playing with filters because we can change these to whatever we want. I could put this up to like a bazillion, whatever I want, and I could go back into the filters and think, oh no, what have I done? I've ruined everything. No, just remove the filters. So come in, with, as with any filters, video or audio, Come in, have a play around, see what difference they make to the sound that you can hear and just find, find out what everything does by practice and practice alone. And join us in the advanced section for more audio filter guides.